Hello fellow classmates. Our future project topic is Women as Nation Builders. What does the future hold for Pakistani women's rights and why it matters? We will be hearing today from Lexi Trask, Penny Reeves, Tara Smith, James Myers, Shannon Kelly, and John Sandberg. Blogger S. Pratton states, A woman is an architect of society. She establishes the institution of family life, builds the home, brings up the children and makes them good citizens. Her strength and totality contributes in making of an ideal family, ideal society, an ideal state. The position of women in any society is the indicator of health of the state. In order to understand how women are nation builders and how this idea correlates with Pakistani women, we want to start with a brief history of women's rights in Pakistan. Lexi, what can you tell us about this? Since the beginning of Pakistan, the lives of women in the country have not been easy. Initially, women's organizations were involved in mostly non-controversial social welfare activities and nation-building efforts and generally received the support of the government. With the takeover of a military government, the struggle for women's rights ceased to be visible as a movement. In 1983, 200 women petitioned against the Law of Evidence, which required the testimony of two women to counter the testimony of one man. The protests did not end well, and they were badly beaten. Between Pakistani culture and Islamic law, women have always been encouraged to stay inside the home to cook, clean, and raise the children. Women's rights have simply been out of reach for most Pakistani women, despite their efforts throughout time. So we ask, how are women being treated currently in Pakistan? Penny, can you give us a few details? Certainly. In Pakistan today, there are still issues revolving around women's rights and the treatment of women in general. For example, domestic violence against women is considered a private matter in Pakistan. Therefore, discrimination and violence occur on a daily basis. It has been estimated that 70 to 90 percent of Pakistani women are subjected to domestic violence, which include physical, mental, and emotional abuse. Women are considered socially and economically dependent on men. Sons of Pakistani families are considered valuable, whereas daughters are considered an economic liability. Tara, can you tell us how education impacts Pakistani women and their future? Sure. Women's education is linked with other facets of human development, making it a priority. These facets include the health and the status of women, early childhood care, nutrition, water, and sanitation, community empowerment, reduction of child labor, and other forms of exploitation and the peaceful resolution of conflict. In Pakistan, there are 163,000 primary schools, of which merely 40,000 cater to girls. Educating women and girls is fundamental to development and growth because learning and skills enable all people to live healthier, happier, and more productive lives. Curbing the intergenerational transmission of poverty is especially important for girls and women. The political status of women in Pakistan impacts their future as well. James, can you explain? That I can. Since 1947, women's participation in politics has played a great role on the political stage. The Constitution asserts the protection of women's rights. Unfortunately, women's political marginalization and other forms of gender discrimination continues to be the norm. Nevertheless, Pakistan's society is rapidly changing. The number of women holding general seats in the National Assembly is increasing. Understanding their potential, women have taken roles in local governments as well. Their performance went on to disprove apprehensions about women's ability to participate in governance. Even though the steps being taken are small, women continue to move forward in the right direction. John, can you explain to us the economic status of women in Pakistan? When it comes to women trying to establish themselves in the business world, they are finding many roadblocks. According to an article in the Middle East Journal of Scientific Research, women are being held back by the inability to secure financing, the lack of family support, and the lack of availability of raw materials. Many are still lacking formal education which robs them of the skills needed to run a business. Shannon, can you explain how family life affects the security of women in Pakistan? Pakistan is the third most dangerous country for women in the world. More than 1,000 women and girls are murdered in honor killings every year. A certain mentality is deeply ingrained in strict patriarchal societies like Pakistan, even though these women are often the breadwinners for their families. Poor and uneducated women must struggle daily for basic rights, recognition, and respect.
Pakistan is the third most dangerous country for when a young girl or woman runs away from home, male members of the family typically consider it a great dishonor to their name. Some families go to the extreme of capturing and executing these women. In conclusion, the NATO General Secretary Rasmussen states, many of the world's longest and deadliest conflicts occur in regions where women's rights are often infringed. Countries that marginalize women often end up unstable. The empowerment of women in unstable countries benefits not only them, but all of us. Currently in Pakistan, there are many organizations advocating for women's rights. These organizations realize, to have a stable nation, you need women who are safe, educated, contribute economically and politically to their country. As women participate in na nation building, countries become more peaceful and stable places. That's the reason we care about the future of Pakistani women. We hope you have enjoyed our Futures Topic presentation. Good day.